Hey yo, this is Dash, and um, <clears throat> in case you didn't know, we in Baltimore got 30 inches of snow last week. Today is Friday, January 30th, I think. Yeah, Friday, January 30th. And between last Saturday and last Sunday, we got in that, that 24 hour span, we got 30 inches of snow. So, most snow, I think, I won't say ever, but most snow in quite a while in Baltimore. So, as you can see, I'm trudging through the snow. And this isn't my normal route, but I figure. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. <sighs> I'm in the garage. That means. All right. Showing too. So. Here's my thermometer. And there is the true temp temperature. So I know I've probably said this before, but see those specks on the lens? There's dirt in the lens and I can't uh, clean it out. So I'm just gonna apologize now for those. <clears throat> so let's see what I have in there. I had to turn the radio off. Uh, here, I'm gonna open up the garage door. I don't know if that'll help. Yeah, I guess it is. A little brighter. So. I have a brisket, some ribs, and pork shoulder in the smoker currently. And I came out here, not to really check on anything, but to turn the uh, vent the intake down a little bit <clears throat> So let's see what am I cooking with today That'd be charcoal Charcoal looks like it's doing what it needs to do and There's a piece of wood in there a little difficult to see but I have one log in there with the charcoal and it looks like it's oh doing what it needs to do. So, since I came out here to check on everything, I'm going to uh, put some sauce on those ribs and uh, let it do what it's doing. I have um, four gallons of water. Four? Yeah, I have four gallons of water in the water pan and it's about a half, three quarters of a bag of charcoal. Um, actually, Almost more than three quarters. I think I might just actually take the rest of that bag and chuck it in there. Um, but temperature seem to be holding steady. Um, my probe, temperature probe, I haven't. I wanted it more up towards the top because of the fact that it's that much warmer up top. So you see where the probe is. All that humidity in there. See where the probe is sitting. This is the hot side because the heat is coming from over here. Um, and that was the thing, I wanted it kinda shielded. So I put it over here, but it's still in the, in the air, so it's getting an ambient temperature. I didn't want it down where Kirk put the, I guess the little hole for the probe, only because when I use it, it seems that the, um, the it, it forces moisture and air to come through there, and I think it cools the probe down because the air is moving. All right, um, but everything looks good so far. Uh, everything's been in here for a few hours. Like I said, I came out here to sauce the ribs, and I'm gonna sauce the ribs, and, <clears throat> sorry. I'm gonna sauce the ribs, and uh, come back out here in a little while. Me again. So I wanted to document this experience. So, Kirk told me about this. He said, it's the craziest thing. <clears throat> he said it. 
before the smoker comes up to temperature, it it kind of drafts out of one exhaust stack, and ex, you know the the exhaust comes out of, of the other. So I guess it's more or less like a back draft. I'm not sure. I guess you might call it. And I'm trying to get a good <clears throat> angle on it, but if you're looking at this. This stack on the left, as I'm looking at it, is drafting correctly. This stack on the right is back drafting, if I'm saying that right. I'm not sure. And the reason, uh, you can, you can kind of see the, the, the steam, and that steam at this point is, is still burning clean, but it's steam and it's not going the way I need it to. Now, <clears throat> adverse effects, temperature. My temperature is dropped. And let me show you what I did. <clears throat> All I did was crack the exhaust, well, the intake tube. That's three quarters, maybe. Now, <clears throat> watch this. Open it all the way back up. And it won't take 60 seconds before it starts to draft correctly. There it is. No more back draft. And proof. Here's my temperature going up. 239. 243. And again, whole stacks. <clears throat> now the only difference I can attribute, or the only difference that I can say from when Kirk ran it um, with charcoal and when I'm running it with charcoal, I'm using Kingsford when I gave him some lump charcoal so the Kingsford doesn't burn as hot, which is fine. Uh, ambient air temperature right now is about 34, 35 degrees, maybe, maybe a little warmer, 36 degrees. And um, earlier I said it was Friday, January 30th. It's Friday, January 29th. Um, only other, an, another difference I have is I have moisture in there. I have water in there. Um, I only put four gallons of water into the bottom of the water pan. Excuse me. So honestly enough, it should possibly be getting dry soon. Um, and again, you can see my temperature is climbing. Um, now that's wide open. And so the intake is, is that wide open. And you see both stacks are drafting the way that they should out. But if I modify the one, it'll cause a backdraft. Interesting. So I've been standing out here for a few minutes watching it do what it needed to do because I wanted to throttle the intake back slightly um, because I didn't want the temperature to get too high. Um, I think I'll just kind of run it and see what happens. Um, it didn't climb up too, too far, too, too fast, which is good. Um, it took it about two, two and a half hours to hit 275, which is fine. Um, but yeah, just, just very interesting to me that, um, it is doing that. I, I think the only difference I had from what Kirk did was the charcoal itself and, uh, the water, the fact that just water inside of the, uh, smoke chamber. So maybe next time I cook something, I will, uh, <clears throat> put no water in it and see what happens. See if, um, see if it still drafts the same way or um, just what happens. Yeah. So of course, me being me, I couldn't just leave it alone. <clears throat> so before, I changed the ball to 
I guess three quarters of the way open. And now I have it. <clears throat> yes, it was less, nonetheless. It, uh, it made a big difference. Temperature dropped. It was not drafting correctly. So, now I, of course you just saw me open it back up. Now it's starting to draft correctly again. And my temperature is climbing. And that's how fast it, it, it changes, which is, which is nuts. So the next thing I'm gonna adjust to see if I can keep it holding steady is the exhaust damper. Um, the way Kirk has this built, has this set up, is it's a slide and it can cover both. But I want it to cover the one halfway. And we'll see if that helps it to hold temperature. <clears throat> Cause what I'm finding is that the temperature was starting to run away from me. Um, I would like the temperature to stay closer to 250, no higher than 275. That's just because that's where I like to run the smoker. Um, but it still looks like it's drafting properly, even though I've choked it off a little. And the temperature is still climbing. So this is what the, sorry there, about that. That's what the exhaust looks like right now. And it still looks like it's drafting properly. And like I said, what I did was I used the, the baffle plate there and I put it on the one side to where it's covering up the exhaust about halfway. And looks like we're holding steady, steady. You saw that little jump there. But I think I'm going to stay out here for a few minutes and observe and uh, see what the temperature does. <clears throat> but I think that might be, you know, I'm still learning how, I'm still learning how the smoker wants to be run. Um, and like I said, I'm running it under different circumstances than, um, or a different set of variables than when Kirk ran it. So, I don't really want to open up the firebox too much. Um, it's still drafting properly, I'm, I'm looking at that. The intake is open full, and this is more for Kurt than anybody. The intake is open all the way, and uh, I think this is, is running more how I want it to run. It's uh, creeped up, but just climbed 259, it's probably been another minute or so. So I'm going to watch it for the next hour or so. I'm going to go back inside and remotely monitor the temperature. And it just hit 261. So we'll see what it's warmer does. than I would like it to be. Not that that's a big deal. I can just I can just adjust my cook accordingly. So what I've done is um, I've gone ahead and wrapped my ribs up. My brisket is looking good. My shoulder is looking good. And because obviously, um, so you can see, hopefully you can see the thermometer, the probe in there. Um, it's not touching the pan. Uh, so there's an, <clears throat> there's an air gap there still. So um, I'm still getting a decent temperature. And I know that um, lower it's in the cook chamber is warmer excuse me it's cooler so i moved the brisket down and uh, you know the pork shoulder has been where it's been so i moved the brisket down so that it doesn't um burn and i moved the ribs up so that they cook a little faster i don't really keep time a lot of times when i do long cooks um more often than not uh i just i go by the way it looks and the way it feels and then of course by temperature so typically when I start cooking brisket ribs chicken pork shoulder when the 
ribs and a chicken are done is typically when I will um, check the brisket and or the pork shoulder to see if it's up to a temperature that I like and then I'll wrap it up. Um, when it's cold like this, sometimes I'll actually take it in the house and put it in the oven and finish cooking it so it takes a little less time. Um, cheating, I know, but once it's got as much smoke as it needs, there's no need for it to stay in the smoker, in my opinion. Now, um, because it's in the vertical smoker today, it's not likely to be a waste of fuel keeping it in there and finishing the cook on that, but that still means I have to charge uh, to and from the house to the garage in uh, 30 some odd inches of, or a little less than 30 inches of snow. So I'll probably, uh, once the ribs are done, I'll probably go ahead and pull the pork shoulder and the brisket and take it in the house and finish the cook. So <clears throat> once the ribs are done, I think that'll probably be the last video or last bit of video. Um, I'm going to honestly let the temperature go and do what it needs to do because of the fact that unless it gets up over like 300 degrees, um, I'm gonna let it let it ride and see where it goes. Uh, the temperature right before I came out here was at about 285, 286 I think it was. So it was a little warmer than I would like it to have been, <clears throat> but it wasn't the end of the world. Um, so yeah. All right, uh, I guess for now this is it. I'm just gonna stand out here and observe this for a little while. Um, so me cracking the damper on the exhaust, you know, halfway and I guess the recorder to uh, retard it, I guess. Uh, didn't do anything. Um, it had no negative effect and it's still steaming. I thought that um, part of the reason why the temperature might be getting warmer was because of the fact that there might not be as much water down in the pan. I thought about putting another gallon or two of water in there, but honestly enough, it's a, uh, honestly, <clears throat> excuse me, honestly enough, it's still steaming. So I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, plus reducing or adding more water would just uh, drop the temperature in the smoker and then we have to fight back. Um, we're rolling it wide open and the exhaust is drafting from both tubes, so we're good. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I won't say report, but to uh, talk about. So I'm getting ready to head back inside the house and uh, yeah, all right, me again. Slightly out of breath <clears throat> because I just walked to the house from the garage with the brisket and the pork shoulder in the snow or through the snow. So, aside from the fact that it's still pretty cold, sorry if you were looking at my beard there and not my face, um, for the most part, I'm finished my cook. Um, the smoker worked remarkably well as uh, to be expected. The temperature rise that I had or was experiencing, I do believe was because of the fact that the water pan was getting low. So maybe I'll add more water next time. Um, but I was very satisfied with the way that it cooked, the way that it turned out. Um, and to use the smoker, primarily with charcoal so that I wasn't uh, running back and forth um, from the smoker in and out of the house so I could leave it unattended for longer periods of time was, was what I bought it for. So it's working the way that I wanted it to. So I You can hear it sizzling in there. That's because the water pan is out of water. And I did just actually shovel a little bit of uh, snow in there. Still can't really see it, but kind of see it bubbling down there. But it smells great, that's the bad one sure. Well, I shoveled a little bit of snow in there to get some of that 
So it wasn't just the oils and greases and such down at the bottom burning up. So like I said, the smoker performed exactly the way that I needed it to. I was able to start it. I think I made four or five trips out of here, maybe about once an hour. Um, and that was because I was fiddling with it. If, um, I don't even think it was that many. I started my fire in the charcoal chimney at about 9.30. And then I put my food on about 10.30. I babysat the smoker till about 11.30 so that I could make sure that the temperature was doing what I needed it to do. And then from 11.30, I didn't come back outside until about one o'clock and that was just to check on the temperature um, and then I came out one or two times in between and then I let them cook I wrapped them and let them cook um, so yeah sometimes it takes longer sometimes it takes less so um, but I'm, I'm happy I'm very very happy that the smoker is working the way that I needed it to um, and there's still plenty of plenty of charcoal left in there. Um, I probably could have used less, but I was really wanting. <laughs> I probably could have used yet used less, but I really wanted to make sure that the um, the fire was hot enough. So charcoal embers are going. Kind of wish I had something to cook on the grill. I might. I would have uh, transferred the charcoal up to the house and done something with it. I think I might just, uh, well, I'm just gonna let it burn out, you know. But all in all, very successful cook, very satisfied in the way that it worked, that the, in the way that the smoker worked. Um, there's still some, you know, of course, issues I have to work out in uh, making sure that the temperature stays where I need it to stay. But other than that, I, I don't see any any fault, any any anything. I'm super ecstatic that it worked the way that I needed it to. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for staying subscribed. If you haven't already, check out the website up there and my Instagram over here. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Deuces.